Hey everybody and welcome to the Web3 van. My name is Kyle, I'm sitting on top of my van Hank and we're gonna talk about Web3. So first, as I mentioned, my name is Kyle and I'm sort of a data analyst, software developer, uh, mostly self-taught that has just learned how to hack some things together and get them to work. Uh, and recently I've been exploring Web3 and smart contracts and how to develop things on the blockchain. And I wanna bring you along for my journey down that rabbit hole. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a brief overview on what Web3 is, and then I'll give you a tour of my van, Hank. I'm not living in my van full time, but I'm looking forward to the opportunity to be able to drive around to some cool spots and shoot some videos. It's gonna be my primary studio for this channel, uh, and hopefully it can open up some opportunities to drive around and meet some really cool people in the Web3 space. So, what are some videos you might see here? We'll show you how to get set up in Web3 with setting up a MetaMask and a hardware wallet, as well as adding different networks to those wallets. We'll show you how to write and deploy some basic smart contracts, as well as NFTs. We'll try to be touching on the major Web3 news every week. We'll break down popular smart contracts, as well as popular scams, and point out some of the things to watch out for. And I'm planning to build a blockchain game, so I'll bring you behind the scenes on how that process goes. I want this channel to be a place where you can follow along on my journey developing in Web3, uh, and hopefully you can learn a thing or two and get yourself involved as well. What I don't want this channel to be is just a place to shill projects and tokens and coins, uh, or really focus on anything financial trading advice-wise. Uh, it's not really what I'm interested in. I'm more interested in the development side of building things. Uh, so that's really where we're gonna focus. Now, what better place to start than answering the question of what even is Web3? Well, I'll tell ya. To get to Web3, we would have had to have gone through Web1 and Web2, right? Right. So what is Web1? Web1 was the first iteration of the internet where it was mostly just static web pages and information sharing. There was little interactivity and you could mostly just consume things. It was the era of just share. Web 1 lasted from around the time the internet was popularized in the early 1990s to around the mid 2000s. After Web 1 came Web 2, and that's where we've been for about the last 15 years. With Web 2 came a swath of new use cases and included interactivity and social interaction on the internet. The interaction of Web2 made it a place for large online communities to start gathering. Many of today's big tech companies like Twitter and Facebook were pioneers of the Web2 movement. But Web2 has come with a number of problems. The chief among them is that the monetization strategies of many of these companies is very extractive of their users' data. It makes sense why this is the case. A lot of these companies had to take on large amounts of VC money early because their focus was on growing and reaching a large amount of users without worrying about how much money they were spending or about not making any revenue. The goal of these companies was to reach as many people as possible and get as much attention as possible and then once you became an indispensable part of your users' lives, that's when you would start extracting monetary value. To make it worse, these companies often hold full custody over your data, and they don't really tell you how they store it or prove that they're storing it safely, uh, and they also don't really tell you how they're using it or who they're selling it to. Enter Web3. While Web3 is still very early, and there's definitely still some imperfections in that everything hasn't worked out and it's not going to solve every problem, I think that it gives us a lot of advantages that can help us achieve some more balance that has been missing in the Web2 era. One of the primary ways that I like to think about Web2 versus Web3 is that Web2 was the share with world and Web3 is the share in world. Web3 is a term coined by Ethereum co-founder Gavin Wood in 2014, but what does it exactly mean? Well. A lot of people have a lot of different definitions of Web3. Most of them share differences in the intricacies, but a lot of them share the same core. And the way I like to think about that core is that Web3 depends on five or six key properties. These properties are that it is a transparent, 
decentralized, trustless, permissionless, distributed protocol, which in the modern times is most likely facilitated with a cryptographic blockchain. So what do these things mean? Well, transparent means that every transaction is available to be seen by any other actor that's using that chain. Being verifiable means that any different party could spin up and run the history of all of those actions and transactions and come to the same result as the current state, meaning that we could reproduce the state of the blockchain. It's trustless because it doesn't rely on the need for any third party human input and we can rely on the deterministic nature of the code. It's distributed and decentralized, meaning that one party can't control the direction of the network or what happens. And it's permissionless, meaning that nobody can stop you or anyone else from participating in the network. These blockchain protocols almost always have their own built-in native payment method using a token. These tokens are how they reward different members on the protocol for securing the network and verifying transaction. But all of that is just blockchain and crypto mumbo jumbo. Where does Web3 come into this? Well, on these blockchains, particularly the Ethereum blockchain and other smart contract blockchains, we're able to release programs known as decentralized applications or dApps. These Web3 dApps, rather than running on a single server that could go down, actually run on the distributed network of nodes that are participating in the blockchain. One of the coolest things about these Web3 dApps is something that the great Balaji put as the open source, open state nature of a lot of these programs. What does this mean? This means that other developers have access, permissionless access, to the data of your dApp so that they can build on top of it and that you can build on top of other users' dApps so that you can add on extra functionality or other cool features without worrying that they're going to revoke your API access. <clears throat> Looking at you, Twitter. This open state nature that allows developers to build on top of other developers' works permissionlessly is really the superpower of Web3. It unlocks the compounding of composability. Web3 also allows users of a protocol or users of an app or a network to become owners of that app or network, which I think is really good because it can bring into alignment the incentives of the users of a platform and the owners of the platform or the developers of the platform so that we're really building things that are actually wanted. And lastly, one of the simplest but coolest things in Web3 is that you should soon have single sign-on across the web using your wallet address, and you'll be able to take all of your data with you wherever you go. Let's get to the van tour, baby. All right, this is my baby Hank. We'll take a look inside. Uh, yeah, worked on building this out with my dad over the last year came with a little bit of uh, dent damage that we had fixed up but let's take a look inside so yeah when you first open it up I uh, put some little rope handles in here and some wood panel tongue in groove on the door uh, and then I've got my water tanks here so I can get them out easily um, got my gray water here and then seven gallons of fresh water it seems to be leaking a little bit, so I'll have to fix that. Um, the water drops into this water filter just so we can know we have clean, drinkable water um, coming through the faucet if we need it. Goes through this water pump uh, and up to this little pull-out hose if we need to rinse off outside. Um, little post-surf rinse. We'll maybe turn that on when we get inside, but yeah, all right, so come on in. So as we get in and we start coming in, we can see we have our cooler there that's just kind of bungeed in place. That's uh, a 12-volt cooler, and then we're still working on figuring out a storage solution for some of our cook stuff on the left there. We've got our stove. Um... And then in that box is just basically some kitchen things that we need, pots, pans, 
Uh, there's a French press back there. Um, if you can see all the nice routered edges and the stuff that actually looks nice on here, um, like the cabinet doors, that's my dad's woodwork. I definitely am not that handy. Now as we come in here, you can see we've got our countertop right there that we can cook on uh, and has a nice window and an open view right now out this side um, and has my computer on it right now. Now if we want to take a look at the powerhouse of the whole thing, we've got a lot of that in here. Um, I've got my extra monitor for when I'm working on stuff out in the van and some clothes. I need to get the storage there going. Uh, there's a remote for some lights I'll show you about in a little bit. And then we have our solar charge controller, our fuse box, and a switch panel up here. Um, and then I don't know if you'll be able to see just down here is where we've got the rest of the powerhouse. We've got a DC to DC charger to charge off the engine when it's running. And then an inverter for uh, house power when we don't have 12 volt. And then just a 100 amp hour lithium ion battleborne battery in there. Um, yeah, even that 100 amp hours, I've never had problem running out of power. And then one other cool thing that I kind of have in here is some access to our back garage, which I'll take you around and show you. But it kind of just flips up into a little bench seat that I can sit on and get access under there. I've got a table under there that I usually set up out here to work on. Alright, and from here is probably where I'm going to be shooting a lot of my videos in this seat. Uh, you can see we've got our lights in here, so we've got some back lights and some front lights here. Um, and then we can turn the water pump on and see how this works. Get a little water pump in. Uh, and then lastly, we've got some... Uh, cool light up lights. I don't know if you can see them right now. We'll brighten them up. That kind of change color. Uh, yeah, just something fun to have at night. And then obviously we've got the bed. It's got a pretty thick mattress on it. Um, yeah, honestly, I can't complain. I might knock off for a few Z's right now. Uh. All right, back to it. All right, now this is one of the most key things in this entire build. It honestly makes the space feel like it's three times the size. Uh, and all it takes is this. Spin this puppy around. Move it up a little more. And now we can kick back. Uh, we've got our curtains here to kind of help black it out. At night when we want to sleep, we can kind of draw it. Um, or it really helps to keep the sun out of the way when I'm working on here if I'm getting a glare. Now, let's go take a look at what van people call the garage. This is our garage. Uh, we actually have a pretty good amount of space. I kind of made sure to measure it so that I could make sure that two at least of my surfboards would fit underneath. Uh, and the idea is that I can hopefully slide a longboard all the way up underneath through that seat that kind of opens up up there and gives access. Uh, yeah, I usually keep a uh, air compressor in here for the tires just in case, and then some tools. Um, a couple extra gallons of gas because this thing is a hog. Uh, I have a heater in here because we just recently took a trip out to Arizona and thought we might be getting cold there. Um, but yeah, otherwise you can fit a ton of storage in here. Uh, any clothes that we need, 
fit a bike in there. Um, and most importantly, like I said, the surfboards. So yeah, that's our garage. Now we'll head up to the roof, which is one of my favorite places on the van and we'll hopefully get cooler in the future. Oh, hey, how'd you beat me up here? Yeah, this is one of my favorite spots on the van to just come up and get the best views uh, and just sit and chill and relax. I've got my solar panels up here. If you can see them, 260 watt panels, 320 watts total. Uh, if you take a look in back, I've got a max fan back there to ventilate for the inside, although it doesn't currently work right now. So come on, get on it, max fan. Uh, and then, yeah, you can see right now, it's just the bars for the rack up here, but I plan to put some deck boards along it. So I can sit up here, put a chair up here, maybe lay a sleeping bag and sleep under the stars up here. So that's my Van Hank, and I'm hoping you'll join me on my journey into Web3. Now sit back and enjoy these views. Mm -hmm.